Hi friends, this is Nirav Kothari. Today I am going to speak about Cloud SQL. And specifically, we are going to answer this question. Should I use Cloud SQL or self-managed RDBMS in my application? So let me start with uh, explaining the difference between two. When we talk about self-managed database, we start with procuring a hardware or a VM, and then we start with uh, installing the right operating system, then uh, database softwares and the right patches on it. And uh, of course, uh, if, if there is any dependencies, you install on that. This could be on your uh, on one of your physical machine or on your VM uh, on your on premise uh, data center, or it could be uh, by taking any virtual machine on uh, uh, public cloud could be GCP. OK, but in both these cases, you have to actually work with all the installation by yourself. When we talk about fully managed database, you have to uh, you don't have to work about uh, you don't have to uh, worry about the uh, hardware deployment infrastructure basically and you don't need to worry about the software and patches uh, deployment as well everything is managed for you and cloud sql is one of the service provided by gcp which provides fully managed database when you have a self-managed database, you have the choice of installing any of your uh, preferred databases. It could be MySQL, Postgres, SQL, SQL Server, MariaDB, Oracle, or IBM DB2. But uh, Cloud SQL supports only these three uh, databases as of now, which is MySQL, Postgres SQL, and SQL Server. Let me talk more about the features of Cloud SQL. When we talk fully managed, that means we don't have to manage about the infrastructure and installation. It's completely managed by GCP and you just get the instance to work with it. Plus, you get a flexibility of scaling as you go. So you may start with a very small instance uh, of your VM. And then, uh, you know, you can keep on increasing, scaling up your uh, instance size as your usage increases. Uh, it also provides functionality like automatic failovers. It also provides you facilities of replication to multiple zones, whether it is in the same region or multiple region. Uh, it all talking about the security, uh, all data is, at rest is encrypted. Also, when you, uh, whenever the data is in transit, that is also uh, uh, encrypted by using SSL. It also allows you to configure your access level, whether you want to make your database privately available or you want to make it public. So these functionalities are available when you use Cloud SQL. Apart from that, it allows you to import and export SQL dump files. It also allows you to automatically backup your data and of course on demand backups else as well. So that even if your uh, uh, RDBMS instance crashes or uh, data gets corrupted, you can restore your previous version of your data. It has an inter easy integration with various GCP cloud compute options whether it is Compute Engine or App Engine or Kubernetes. Also, it is integrated with Stack Driver for logging and monitoring purposes. Now, let me show you a quick demo of uh, how, how easily it can be created. I am on Cloud SQL instance page. I'll create one instance. I'll select MySQL. generate the password. Uh, right now, I will keep the MySQL version as 5.7. I'll create the instance in US Central 1 zone. I'll create single zone instance. I will configure it to use smaller instance. 
just to save on my cost. Storage, I can uh, select SSD and I would select 10 GB of storage. I am enabling the automatic storage increase option. So when I near my limit, it will automatically expand the storage. I will keep the public IP open. Automatic backups are enabled and also the point in time recovery is enabled. I will keep the default option for maintenance window and simply click on create instance. It will take around a minute to create this. I'll pause the video till then. Okay, so the instance is now created. It took around four or five minutes to create this. Uh, here on the page, you can actually look at the basic metrics, CPU utilization, memory usage, IO uh, operations, etc., etc. Uh, you can go into this users to create users for your database. You can go into this databases pages to add databases and tables. And that's all how you, that's easy it is to create a database in cloud SQL. Now let me go back to the presentation. So coming back to the comparison between the uh, self-managed database and cloud SQL. So yes, uh, configuration wise, setup wise, cloud SQL is much more easier than setting up uh, by yourself. Uh, but you get certain flexibility when you uh, have self-managed database. The DB version, you have the flexibility in case of self-managed database, you have the flexibility to choose the database version that you want. Whereas in case of cloud SQL, uh, there are limited set of uh, versions uh, available that you can use for each of these database. But in most of the cases, these uh, database versions are enough for you to get started. Uh, maintenance window you need to define in case of cloud SQL and all the updates and patches will be uh, done during that window only. Whereas in case of self-managed database, it's you, the, the complete control is in your hand. You know, you can do it at your convenience. Failover and replication is very much easy in cloud SQL. It's just one click option in cloud SQL. Whereas in case of uh, self-managed database, you have to configure it on your own and it takes time. Of course, you need to test out uh, the theory properly. Uh, pricing wise, uh, Cloud SQL is little expensive as compared to uh, your uh, self-managed database. But you pay that price for the flexibility that you get. Now, given the uh, by knowing the pros and cons. Now the question is how do we choose between these two options? So uh, I would say we can select uh, uh, if, if your application is, you know, a critical application, critical business applications, then you should choose highly available cloud SQL and of course enable high availability options in that. If you have in-house uh, DBA expert or systems expert who can uh, manage your database instance, then probably you can go ahead with self-managed database. But if it is a average usage where you know you want to start with a small application and you know it's not very business critical application, maybe you can start with single instance cloud SQL. So that's all about it. And